Luke chapter 7, Luke chapter 7, look at your neighbor, ask their name, because tell them I'm going to need your help today. Luke chapter 7, Luke chapter 7, amen. Luke chapter 7, verse number 36. Luke chapter 7, reading particularly at verse number 36, and when you found it, holler back at me, word. Luke chapter 7, verse number 36. When one of the Pharisees invited Jesus to have dinner with him, he went to the Pharisee's house and reclined at the table. A woman, let the church say woman. A woman in that town who lived sinful life learned that Jesus was eating at the Pharisee's house. So she came there with an alabaster jar of perfume. As she stood behind him at his feet weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears. Then she wiped them with her hair kissed them and poured perfume on them. When the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, oh my goodness, if this man were a prophet, he would have known who is touching him and what kind of woman she is, that she is a sinner. Jesus answered him, Simon, I have something to tell you. Tell me, teacher, he said. Two people owed money to a certain money lender. Anybody got some creditors? Wave at me. All right, bank of America student loans wave at me hello somebody hello two people own money to a certain money lender one on 500 De Niro and the other 50 neither of them had the money to pay him back so he forgave the debt of both is there anybody believe in God that student loan is going to be forgiven oh come on now this, this shout is for those of you who got some debts. Hello, somebody. All right, now, now I promise you, take your hands off. Come on, come on. I'm going to come over here and slap you now. All right, all right. Now, now, which of them, which of them will love him more? Simon replied, I suppose the one who had the bigger debt forgiven. You have judged correctly, Jesus said. Then he turned to what the woman said to Simon. Do you see this woman? I came into your house. You did not give me water for my feet, but she wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You did not give me kiss, but this woman from the time I entered has not stopped kissing my feet. You did not put oil on my head, but she has poured perfume. Chanel number five. Hey, know somebody. She has poured perfume on my feet. Therefore I tell you how many sins have been forgiven as her great love has shown. But whoever has been forgiven little loves little. Then Jesus said to her, your sins are forgiven. The other guests began to say among themselves, who is this who even forgives sin? Jesus said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Now, if I was talking to an older crowd, I would attack this sermon from the late Tina Turner. What's love got to do with it? Hello, somebody. Uh, but I know I got the young people up in here. So I want to talk about extravagant love or crazy love. Look at your neighbor and say, I want some of that. I want some of that. Extravagant love or crazy love. We know that when we read the Bible that the greatest command from Jesus is simply in two form. The greatest command that Jesus gives us is that you and I ought to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, and you ought to love your neighbor as yourself. The way I know you love God is how you love me. The way I know how you value God is how you treat me. And the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 that though I sing like a bird and though I speak in tongues and though I prophesy and I preach and I have not love, I am a sounding brass, I am a tinkling symbol. Uh, in other words, I'm not concerned about your gifts as much as I'm concerned about your fruits. Hello, somebody. You see, I know you got the gift of singing and the gift of preaching and the gift of teaching and the gift of tongues and interpretation of tongues and prophecy, uh, but your gifts is no good without your fruit. Uh, the world will know you and I are believers not because of how gifted we are or how fruitful we are. Hello, somebody. And Galatians chapter 5 talks about the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, gentleness, goodness, meekness, temperance, and self-control. Against such there is no law. And God doesn't just want you and I to use our gifts, but he wants us to manifest our fruit. Look at your neighbor. Say, I'm a fruit inspector. Uh, come on, say, I came to inspect your fruit. Uh, I'm not inspecting your shoes or your clothes or what kind of 
car you drive or the house you live in. I'm inspecting your, come on, I'm inspecting your food. I, I want to know how you love the people on the parking lot when you were trying to find a parking spot. Hello, somebody. I want to know how much you love when you're outside of this building. I, and I believe that the world is going to be saved and the world is going to be redeemed. Not because we've got gifted people, but we got fruitful people. Uh, that we demonstrate the love of God wherever we go. Uh, and one of the challenges that God is calling you and I to do uh, is not just to love God, but to love people. Oh my God. Uh, how many of you love God in this place? My God, you love God. Uh, your problem is not loving God, it's loving the people of God. Hello somebody. Uh, because some people make it difficult for you to love them. Am I talking to anybody? I'm talking to your family. I'm talking to your relatives. It's easy to love God. We just sang about that song. Who going to love a God like this? A God that woke you up this morning. A God that started you on your way. A God that put clothes on your back, shoes on your feet, a roof over your head. Who wouldn't serve a God like this? Who wouldn't love a God like this? The issue is not that I love God. The issue sometimes is I don't, number one, love myself self or I don't love other people and it's hard for you to love people when you don't love yourself and that's why every now and then you ought to take a selfie of your own self and remind yourself of the goodness of God look at your neighbor and say if nobody holler for me I holler for myself if nobody scream for me I scream for myself if nobody shout for me I shout by myself because when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done Done for me. Uh, my soul cries out. Come on, nudge your neighbor. Say, neighbor, I'm not even going to wait for you to tell me to praise him. Uh, when I look back over my life uh, and I think things over twice, should, uh, come on, take your hands off of that. I promise you, I'll come get you. Look at your neighbor and say, hey, 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 hey. If nobody else celebrates you, you ought to step out of yourself. Look at yourself and say, you a survivor. Should have been. All right, look at your neighbor. Look at your neighbor. Say, help the organist. Help the organist. Amen. Amen. That's like a lover without self-control. Hello, somebody. I, I promise I'll come get you. Take your time, brother. I got to give it there. This is my first time. Is that all right? Y'all give it up for the organist. Amen. Amen. So we ought to love people and we ought to love God. And one of the ways that God loves us is God loves us extravagantly. Oh my goodness. He adores us. He continues to open doors for us. He continues to make ways for us. But we all know that love can be messy. Am I talking to anybody? I said love can be messy. Anybody can love you after you got it going on. But can they love you in your mess? Romans 5, 8 says, but God commanded his love towards us uh, that while we were still in the club, preach Pastor Jazz, uh, while we were still smoking reefer, preach Pastor Jazz, uh, while we were backing it up and dropping it like it's hot. Uh, come on, I wonder if I got anybody. But God commanded his love towards us. Uh, in other words, God did not wait for you to get it together for him to love you. Uh, he loved you when you were a mess. Uh, now this shout is not for the car. It's it's not for the clothes, it's not for the crib, it's not for the cash, it's that God loved you in spite of you. I need somebody to slap five at somebody and say, excuse me, but this shout is the mere fact that he chose to love me in spite of my crazy self. But God commanded his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ came and died for us. And just the same way that God loves us extravagantly. Just the way he loves us, that kind of crazy kind of love. Then he wants you and I to turn that and I love other people the same way. That's really why I love this biblical text. I love this text because it introduces us to a woman who understands the power of extravagant love. It introduces us to a woman who's crazy. 
about loving Jesus. It introduces us about a woman who knows how to crash a party. I think there's a thousand women in here who said, I'm about to tear this place up. I'm about to crash a party. Now, I don't know how y'all do it because this is my first time here. But go ahead and look down your row and say, neighbor, if I say hallelujah and you say hallelujah, I'm in a good seat. But if I say hallelujah and you don't say hallelujah, I say, usher, I need another seat. Because when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries. My soul cries out, hallelujah, I thank God for saving me. Uh, let's unpack the biblical text. Uh, you see, at this particular dinner party, uh, there is a prominent Pharisee uh, whose name is Simon. Uh, Simon decided that he's going to house house party number one uh, and house party number two. Uh, there were other guests at the party, uh, including Lazarus, Martha, and even Mary. Uh, at the meal time, uh, the text said a certain woman uh, who lived in that town uh, learned that Jesus was eating at the Pharisee's house. Uh, and she came there with an alabaster box of perfume. Uh, now, it amazes me, change, uh, that Luke or none of the gospel uh, ever tells us the sister name, uh, but it tells us what she did. Uh, they say she's a sinner. Uh, they don't even mention what her name is. Is. They don't mention her genealogy. They say she's a sinner. And is it amazing that people will judge you based on what you do and not because of who you are? But the reason why the devil reminds you of your past is because he doesn't know your future. Because if the devil knew your future, he will leave your past alone. Oh, you got to be careful of the people who knows what you do but don't even know your name. And so here it is at this dinner party. Jesus is reclining at Simon the Pharisee's house. And the Bible said that while he's there eating dinner, this woman who is a sinner shows up. Now if you do a background check on the woman, if you Google the woman, you found out she's not just a sinner. She's a public sinner. She's a prostitute. She's little Kim on a Paul preach Pastor Jazz. All I'm trying to tell you is that everybody knows her stuff. It's one thing to be a private sinner, but it's another thing when everybody knows your stuff. But I've come to prophesy to a thousand of y'all the reason why God had to let it go public is because He's about to bless you public. He's about to prepare a table for you in the presence of your enemy. He's about to anoint your head with oil and your cup is about to run over not in private but in public here it is here it is the woman shows up and y'all know I know y'all know Bishop T.D. Jakes he's got the book disruptive thinking the woman shows up and this is disruptive she disrupts the party she crashes the party roll up in the party take her extensions down take her bobby pin out get down on the floor oh I need some women in here who said I'm about to get down and dirty with my praise I didn't come to church to be cute this morning. I didn't come to church and not to sweat this morning. I came to church to tell God, you've been so good to me. If I got to crawl on the floor, if I got to holler all by myself, if I got to scream all by myself, look at your neighbor and say, you can be a cute worshiper if you want to. But I came to give God a radical shout. I came to give God a cry. Where the crazy women at? The Bible said, in fact, your praise is no good unless you break a sweat. Now, who been to the club? You know you don't be on the dance floor just looking cute. Then when you come to church, you ought to give God twice as much. Look at your neighbor and say, I came to crash the party. I came to get down and dirty. I came to give. 
give God a radical praise for all that he's done. She crashes. She crashes Simon's house. She lets her hair down and oh she begins to love up on Jesus. She stood behind him at his feet weeping. She began to wet his feet with her tears. Then she wiped them with her hair. She kissed them and poured perfume on them. Now this brings me to point number one. And point number one in regards to extravagant love is listen extravagant love is costly. What did I say? It's what? It's costly. That's some of y'all, you, you're settling for cheap kind of love. Hello, somebody. Uh, but extravagant love is... It, it, it is costly. Uh, while Jesus was eating, uh, she poured the jar of perfume uh, mixed with her tears over the feet of Jesus. Uh, and the gospel of John says uh, that, my goodness, because of what she did, uh, the entire house was filled with the odor. Uh, now, if you understand what this woman had in her possession, uh, this is not any cheap perfume. Uh, this is not Chanel number no. 5. Uh, this is not something you can buy at Nostrum. Uh, what she poured on Jesus uh, was an entire year's salary, uh, according to theologian. Uh, it took a year for her to gain uh, what she got. Uh, maybe she was saving it up to buy a new car. Uh, maybe she was saving it up to buy or put a down payment on a house. Uh, maybe she was saving it up to take her child to college. Uh, maybe she was saving it up so she can go to Punta Cana, Hawaii, and Jamaica. Maybe she was saving up so she can refurnish her house. She was saving this thing. It'd been worth an entire year. But for some reason when she got in the presence of Jesus and she saw Jesus and she realized that Jesus has been that good to her, she said, I got to give him something he can see. Oh, I got to do something. She said, because he loved me extravagantly, I've got to in return turn, give him something extravagant. Uh, I declare and declare uh, that your cheap love is over. Can I talk up in here? I declare and decree. Can I prophesy to somebody? Uh, water down love is over. I'm tired of you just calling me on Friday, uh, but never call me for the rest of the week. Uh, oh, can I prophesy to somebody in here? Look at your neighbor say, no more cheap love. We want extravagant love. And when I I say extravagant love. It does not mean you got to buy me the Mercedes. It does not mean you got to buy me the Bentley. It, oh, I don't mind if you do. Now listen, I ain't no gold digger, but I don't want no broke brother. Hello, sir. I wish I had some. Where the single women in here? All the single women holler at me. No, 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 no. All I'm trying to say, all I'm trying to say, the revelation uh, is extravagant love costs you something. Uh, and sometimes, are y'all still out there? Uh, sometimes it costs you time. Let the church say time. Uh, sometimes it costs you T-I-M-E. Uh, oh my goodness, extravagant love uh, is taking the time to pay attention to me. Uh, oh, the woman give Jesus uh, her undivided attention. Uh, she she not only give them attention, uh, but she give them some affection. Uh, ooh, Jesus. Uh, after paying $150 getting your hair done, uh, she got in the presence of Jesus. Uh, she didn't mind if she sweat her hair out. Uh, she didn't mind if the bubby pan dropped on the floor. Uh, she didn't mind. She put that here between the toes of Jesus. Uh, now, y'all got to understand, I know it's Jesus, uh, but Jesus didn't wear Nike sneakers. You got to understand this is Jesus. He wore sandals. So on his way to the Pharisee's house, he could have stepped in some doo-doo. And Simon did not wash his feet. But the woman didn't care if his feet was dirty because she know he made her clean. I came to prophesy to somebody, when you love him, it doesn't matter. She, she washes, she washes, she takes her hair, wrapped it between his big toe and the little toe. 
and begin to give him, listen, affection and attention. And the Bible said, don't miss the revelation, that Simon said within himself, if Jesus was a prophet, he would have known who and what. Okay, 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 I'm going to have to pick it up at the second service. Okay, Simon says within himself, sidebar, the greatest lie you tell is to yourself. God help me. Uh, um, Simon says within himself, if he was a, if Jesus was a prophet, he would have known who, who that. He would have known who and what. It is that touched him. Oh my goodness. This brings me to point number two. Extravagant love is sometimes going to bring criticism. Your love choice might make you a target. Preach Pastor Jazz. I said your love choice. Can I talk to somebody? Uh, might get you banned from social media. Hello somebody. Uh, your love choice. May People may unfollow you. Uh, Simon said within himself. Uh, if Jesus was a prophet. Uh, he would have known who and what. Can we unpack this? Somebody say unpack it Dr. Jazz. Uh, okay let's unpack it. Number one we know that Jesus is a prophet. Right? We all agree with that. Okay number one we know Jesus as a prophet. Pops number two, we know that Simon is not. God, y'all missed the key right there. I said, number one, we know that Jesus is a prophet. We all agree. Number two, we know Simon is not. So lean forward. Let me ask you a question. If Simon is not a prophet, how does he know what she is? Oh, God. Okay, y'all missed your cue. Okay, okay. We are in summer school, so rewind. We know that Jesus is a prophet, right? We know that Simon is not a prophet. Uh, well, how the, in fact, let me ask you a question. Uh, how she know where Simon live? God help me. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. How she know where Simon live unless she been there before? Oh, Jesus, have mercy. Because, come on, sit down. She's, she's, she's not on the guest list. She's not invited. But she Uber to Simon's house. That's because she's got the address in her phone. Because she's been in the house before. She's been on the pole before. Preach back. God, I wish I had somebody. 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 You see, listen, can I argue? Somebody said argue, Dr. Jess. You see, Simon didn't recognize her because her hair was up. But the moment she started taking it down, he said, wait a minute, that's my woman loving upon Jesus. I wish I had somebody in here. Okay, lean forward. Let me tell you the principle. The people who tell you about your business is because that's their business. Whatever they're judging you about is what they, oh my God, whatever they are guilty in, that's the very thing. How you know I'm that unless you are that? Because whatever I am is what you are. Whatever you call me is what you are. We in summer school. How, 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 how does Simon know who she is? How you know my stuff? Unless you in the same stuff I'm in, preach pastor Jay. Oh, I'm trying to help y'all today. How you know, how you know, how does Simon know who she is and what she does and how does she know where Simon lived? Simon said within himself, if Jesus was a prophet, 
he would have known who and what. And listen, extravagant love is going to bring criticism. Oh, extravagant love. You ain't really love until somebody is bothered by your love. In fact, in fact, can I tell you something? Then we got to get out of here. You ain't really praise God until your praise bothers somebody. So look down your road, say, neighbor, for the last 20 minutes I was trying to be cute. But this next shout is going to give you a migraine. God help me. I said, this next shout is going to mess you up. Come on. This next shout is going to... Come on, look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, is my praise bothering you? Is my shout bothering you? Is my scream bothering you? Is my holler bothering you? Well, if it's bothering you, there's a seat for you on the parking lot. But when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Your praise on the body of somebody. Your shout on the body of somebody. Your dance on the body of somebody. Extravagant love. Crazy kind of love. It's costly. Extravagant love. He's going to bring forth criticism. Somebody in your section is looking at you right now and saying, it don't take all that. But would you look back at them and say, it take all that and some more. It take all that and some more. Come on, open your mouth, throw your head back, and give God a radical shot. Let every devil hear you. Let every demon hear you. Let every witch hear you. Open your mouth and shine. Look at your neighbor and say, don't push me. Cause I'm close to the edge. But when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul. Come on, check your pew, check your pew. Check around your section. Look at your neighbors and neighbor. You can sit there and look cute if you want to. But he woke me up this morning, started me on my way, put clapping in my head. Open your mouth, throw your head back, and somebody scream, somebody shout. is bothering you my problem didn't bother you and God picked me up and delivered me and you think I'm gonna come up in here and look cute the devil is a liar I've been through too much to not to praise it I've been through too much to not to praise it I've been through Look at your neighbor and say, we don't need no music. The roof is on fire. We can shout all by our... Um, um, 
I'm, I'm on. I'm gonna need I'm I'm gonna need you. Come around, yeah. I'm gonna need you. And you, yeah, you were helping me yesterday. I'm gonna need you. Come on. Is that all right? Oh my God, what's the time right here? Okay. Oh my. Come on. Come on. Oh, come on. Come on. J just just stand in this block right here. Come on, sister. Go. Take your time. No worry. All right. Take your time. Right in this block right here. All right. All right. Face each other. Oh God. Uh, Y'all got insurance for the building? Okay, y'all got insurance because the Bible says that Simon said within himself, this is Simon, if Jesus knew what kind of woman that she was and what she did, oh, he wouldn't let her do what she does. And Jesus read Simon. Oh, God. God's about to read your enemies. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost in here. I said, God is about to expose the people who've been smiling in your face, but dog in you and your back. I said, God is about to expose your enemy. He's about to let them pay your bills. He's about to let them, I feel the Holy Ghost in here. And the Bible says, oh, that Jesus, oh, y'all got to read the scripture. The Bible says that he turned from Simon Matrix. Okay, y'all missed it. He turned from Simon and he faces the woman. This is just for 500 of y'all. God just told me to tell you he's turning towards you. I feel the Holy Ghost in here. He said, I'm leaning in your direction. I need you to lean on your neighbor and say, God just turned in my direction. He's leaning in my direction. He's looking in my direction. He's feeling my direction. I need somebody to open your mouth and throw your head back. He's leaning. He, he turned towards the woman, but listen, he's talking to Simon. Talk to me. Simon, you see her? Simon, you see her? Ever since I've been in your house, you ain't wash my feet. But since the girlfriend did, ever since I've been in your house, you ain't anoint my head. But since the girlfriend did, ever since I've been in your house, you ain't affirm me and you ain't even celebrate me. All you did was tolerated me. I come against the tolerating spirit. God said you coming out of relationships that ain't even celebrating you. They just putting up with you. But until you know who you are, you're going to let them treat you any kind of way. But when you know that you're a chosen generation, a royal. He turns, he turns, he turns towards the woman. And he stops talking to Simon. And he speaks a word to the woman. That brings me to number three. As I bid you feel, number one, extravagant love is costly. Extravagant love brings about criticism. But I somehow found something about extravagant love. And extravagant love will cure you. Who I feel like preaching. I said extravagant love will love the mess out of you. You see, you saw the woman as a sinner because you've been seeing her through your eyes, your trifling eyes. You see the woman through your eyes and all you see is a piece of meat. Can I preach up in here? You see her through your eyes and all you see is a trifling mother, a trifling woman. But Simon, I'm about to let you see her through my eyes and when you see her through my eyes you'll see she a chosen generation she a royal priesthood she's the head and not the tail look at your neighbor say neighbor God's trying to give you some new eyes he's about to give you some new contacts when you leave 
live here, you're going to see people the way God sees them. You're going to see them through the eyes of Jesus. Pull your neighbor by the hand and say, we got to get out of here. But Lord, let me see them through the eyes of the Father. Slap five at your neighbor and say, I just saw you in your future. I just saw you in your destiny. I just saw you in your elevation. You ought to shout because of how God sees 